Hello, I'm Dr. Epperly, and today I want to say a few words about the treatment of hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is a very common condition which affects millions of Americans. Generally speaking, it's a state where your thyroid gland down here at the base of your neck does not produce enough thyroid hormone to meet your body's needs. And that can create a lot of different symptoms because you have thyroid hormone receptor sites on virtually every cell of your body. Now, another aspect of hypothyroidism is where your thyroid hormone may be plentiful enough in your system, but your tissues are not utilizing it properly. Or you may be over converting thyroid to reverse what's called reverse T3, which inhibits thyroid, or you may be having trouble converting one thyroid hormone type into another. So let me explain what I mean by that. So we'll use this diagram to illustrate what I'm talking about. So your thyroid gland is under the control of your pituitary gland and the pituitary puts out a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone which stimulates the thyroid gland to produce these two thyroid hormones called T4 and T3. And then those make their way back to the brain and the pituitary and turn down the production of TSH. So if you have a lot of T4 and T3 produced by the thyroid or given to you in pill form or liquid form, then the TSH will go down. And it's a very efficient system, so much so that most doctors use the TSH as the sole arbiter of whether your T4 and T3 levels are where they should be. Uh, but unfortunately, that doesn't always work that well. So there is actually an over-reliance upon TSH in uh, the practice of medicine these days to determine whether or not you have the right dose of T4 and T3. So it's very important to not only treat by labs, but also uh, by symptoms. And in fact, symptoms are probably more important than labs. I always tell my patients that the labs tell us what we can do with the thyroid, but not necessarily what we should do. Symptoms are really the most important thing. Now, as I said, if you give a lot of uh, thyroid hormone, uh, you will suppress TSH levels. And I don't think we need to be afraid of TSH uh, going down. Now there is controversy about that. Some people say you shouldn't suppress TSH even though that's what we do when we're treating patients who have um, had thyroid cancer. We do that routinely. And they used to treat thyroid uh, patients with nodules with a lot of T4. Uh, in order to suppress TSH until they found out that that doesn't really work. So uh, the main form of thyroid hormone replacement is this right here. It's called T4 or Synthroid. Now, a lot of people don't want to take Synthroid because it's even the name sort of has a pejorative uh, um, feeling to it that it's synthetic Synthroid. However, even though it's synthetic, it is bioidentical, which means that it exactly matches the T4 that comes out of your thyroid gland. Now, most of the thyroid hormone that your thyroid gland produces is T4, and this is what Synthroid is. About 5% is T3, and this is actually the active thyroid hormone. So T4 has to be converted into T3 for it to work, and that's by the removal of one of the iodine atoms. Some people have trouble converting T4 into T3, maybe as many as 17% of the population. Now, most endocrinologists don't think that this problem is very significant. However, in my practice, I find a huge improvement in patients uh, who are not doing well on T4 when we add some T3. And it doesn't have to always be a lot of T3. Sometimes it can be just a tiny amount. Other times it's a large amount. It just depends, again, on symptoms. So we 
in our practice use quite a bit of T3 in one form or another, either lyothyronine by itself or the T3 that comes in natural desiccated thyroids like Armour Thyroid, NP Thyroid, uh, Nature Thyroid, WP Thyroid, um, and those types of things. So right now in our practice we use a lot of NP Thyroid. Um, I tend not to use a lot of armor thyroid because, mostly because of expense, and I don't think it's any better than NP thyroid. There have been some problems over the years where certain types of natural desiccated thyroids uh, become unavailable or they get recalled or uh, various things seem to happen. Right now, NP seems pretty available, so we've been using that quite a bit. And if other patients come to me on Armour Thyroid and they're happy, I'll just leave them on Armour Thyroid. So, so when patients want to have something other than Synthroid or, or generic levothyroxine, uh, we can either just add some T3 or we can uh, add some natural desiccated thyroid, which comes from the thyroid glands of pigs. And because that's a combination of T4 and T3 in about a nine to two ratio. So uh, the kind that we use just kind of varies from patient to patient. So um, the thing that I want to emphasize probably the most is that uh, it's important to treat to symptoms. And this is why we see lots of thyroid patients because we find uh, that, or the patients find that their other doctors are very reluctant to treat them if their labs are so-called normal. Um, and let me say one more word about labs. There's a lot of people in the um, integrative medicine world or functional medicine world who, who believe that there are so-called optimal ranges for free T3 and free T4. And um, I'm actually not an optimal range guy uh, because again, um, when they figured out what the normal ranges were for thyroid levels, they took populations who were healthy and feeling fine, uh, at least I assume that's what they, they do when they establish lab normals. So when you plot out the levels of thyroid hormones in these people, you're, it's gonna uh, create a bell curve, right? And, and within this bell curve, all of these people felt fine. So to say that this optimal range is where you should be, to me, is kind of a, a fallacy. That, that it's kind of illogical because all of those people felt fine. And I think we need to keep in mind the concept of biochemical individuality and, and note the fact that everybody does not feel the same at, this, at the same level of thyroid hormone. Everybody's different. So you have to go not by optimal uh, ranges, in my opinion, but you have to tweak the thyroid doses to get to where the patient feels their best. And of course, you don't want to over treat with too much thyroid because then you run the risk of uh, heart rhythm disturbances or things like insomnia and other symptoms of too much thyroid. And, and another problem long-term with too much thyroid is um, osteopenia or osteoporosis. So we need to be on guard uh, for that too. So it requires um, a good degree of balancing when you're looking at levels and doses and, and, and all of that. The other thing we need to keep in mind about treating hypothyroidism is that not every symptom is from your thyroid. Um, so we have to always maintain a holistic view of your symptoms and not try to attribute it to just one thing. And fatigue is a classic symptom which has multiple causes and thyroid is just one of many. So I also want to point out that some supplements can help with thyroid function. For example, selenium is important in the conversion of T4 to T3. There's also some uh, botanicals that help in the utilization of T3, how T3 interacts with the cells, both the DNA in your cell and the enzyme systems in your cells. So uh, at Forum Health, we use a supplement called ThyroXL uh, quite often, which has a number of different nutrients 
that support uh, thyroid production and conversion and utilization at the cellular level. So oftentimes we will have people on uh, Thyro Excel to help uh, them with their thyroid condition. Um, another thing we need to point out about going back to labs is that uh, we need to uh, measure something called reverse T3 if somebody is not doing well with their thyroid uh, dose. And reverse T3 is the other uh, conversion product of T4. T4 can go into active T3 or it can be converted into reverse T3 and things like stress and uh, hormones can affect uh, the level of reverse T3. So a lot of times we'll measure that and we will compare it to the uh, free T3 and it should be a certain ratio typically for people to feel their best. So a lot of times we will adjust the levels of T4 and T3 in order to get the right amount of reverse T3. Finally, uh, the last thing I'll say about labs is the thyroid hormones that you're measuring in your serum does not necessarily represent what's in the tissues or in the cells. So we have to sometimes take those blood levels with a grain of salt. And, and again, this is why we need to look hard at symptoms rather than just blood levels because what's going on at the cellular level with your thyroid hormone is not necessarily what you're seeing in your serum levels. So, and the only way to know that is going to be uh, to listen carefully uh, for what symptoms the patient may or may not be having. So that's about all I want to say today about hypothyroidism and thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.